Welcome to Perfect Python, the series where I show you how to take your code to the next level, perfection. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on code formatting using a tool called Black. There are two main reasons for doing this. One, readability and maintainability, and two, standardization. In short, code formatting means that other people looking through your project have an easier time doing so. They don't have to trawl through badly formatted code um, it's all standardized because it's all using the same tool and a lot of code uses this tool and it just means that it's easier for people including yourself later down the line when the project really starts scaling up. Of course if you find this video helpful at any point then consider like it to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah with that out of the way let's get into it. Before we talk about the tool in general I want to give a quick overview to something called PEP8. Now anyone that's been in the server has probably heard this term at least once or twice. If you've been using Python you may have heard of it, you may not have done. Essentially this is a style guide for Python. So it kind of details the best ways to code um, in Python, the ways to make it look nice. And you can read through it if you want. I'm not going to go over like huge amounts of things. You know, it goes over in, well, to be fair, there's a lot it goes over. As you can see, it goes over everything from imports, which we'll actually cover in the next video. And then we've got your know, comments, naming conventions, all that stuff. So you can read through that if you want. And our tool isn't going to help with all of that. Um, so it's not going to help with stuff like naming conventions, for example, but it is going to help with stuff like line lengths and, you know, uh, formatting of parameters inside brackets and stuff. Um, and to kind of show it off, I've got this sort of template code. Now, hopefully it's zoomed in enough. I've zoomed it in three levels. And I don't think it's going any more than this. So hopefully it's fine to those of you on mobile. So we kind of got four sections here that will be changed by our tool. So the first of which is really just a display info method. We don't need to worry about the class. I was just doing that to extend the line length. But this is um, a particularly long line. I've used type hints to stretch it out a bit. Uh, so this line here is 72 characters. This line here is 79. This line here is 88. And this line here is 99, for those of you wondering. And it's really quite long. It's, what, 96 characters long. So it's still technically within Pep8 extended guidelines but generally speaking not so much so this line will be changed to be shorter and you'll see how when we actually run the thing uh, this add numbers uh, is a shorter line but these uh, arguments are improperly formatted you're not really supposed to do this in terms of pep8 so this will be fixed as well uh, this text variable may look as though there's nothing wrong however our tool is opinionated. Now what that means is that it sort of has its own ideas um, on top of Pep8 about how code should look. And this is a good thing and a bad thing in certain respects. It's a good thing that if a lot of people use it and a lot of people do, then all code will look the same because it's all being formatted by the same tool. So that, in theory, is a good thing. Of course, the bad thing is that if there's a particular you know, house style that this tool violates, then it's it's going to be a bit weird and there's no way to turn things off as far as I know. I might be wrong about that, I don't know. Um, but this will actually turn these single quotes into double quotes because it prefers double quotes externally. And then if you had single quotes, you know, what, I'll actually put some here. If you had, uh, say, double quotes on the inside, it would actually convert them to single quotes, but we'll get back to that once we actually run it. And this tuple here, it contains some of the Greek alphabet. I couldn't be asked to copy it all out, but it's it's long enough for uh, for our tool to do what we want it to do. And our, uh, our multi-line tuple does not have a trailing comma, uh, and that will be fixed by our tool. Now, all we need to do is install the tool and show it off. Now, it's called black. I don't know if I would have talked about that in the intro or not, but um, we can simply do pip. Oh, my God, if I can get my microphone wire out of the way. And my microphone out of the way, the keyboard. There we go. Uh, pip install black and it will install itself so I'm just moving stuff with the microphone around uh, it will install itself and a few other dependencies so it has you know it, uh, the CLI manager and all that it doesn't necessarily matter because it's a development dependency and uh, dependencies matter a lot less when they're for development stuff but to run the code all we need to do is black and then the file or the directory that we want to format. So we could do black dot, then it will format every Python file it finds in the directory, or we could do black formatting.py. I'm just going to do black dot. You can see that a lot of things have changed. Uh, so this line has been shortened. Um, well, it's actually been split over three lines. Uh, so all these parameters are now on a single line. 
and we have our method definition and our return type um, on separate lines. If it was even longer, it would actually format it differently. So it would uh, put everything on each line. Uh, but as soon as this fits within the line limit that we gave it, it doesn't matter. Uh, these add numbers, because it was a particularly short one, it's just put them all on the same line because that's cleaner. Uh, it hasn't actually changed this. I thought it did, was it? Was that updated? I thought it changed that. It used to, anyway. And if we do that, will it do it? Oh, it does. Okay, so it doesn't do it if you have a quotes inside. I think I think it used to, but maybe that's changed. But yeah, it does do it if it has quotes outside. And then the letters, we can see the trailing comma has been added here uh, as well. We can also change the line length. That's one of the options we do have. Actually, it does have a lot of options, but I don't really know what most of them do. So, um, So normally, it doesn't strictly follow PEP8. So PEP8 has a line limit of 79 characters for code and 72 characters for documentation. Uh, black doesn't uh, touch documentation at all, but it does touch code. And it uses 88 characters instead of 79, which seems like a bit of a random number to pluck from the ether. And as far as I can tell, it kind of is a random number. It was just the one that the black developers felt worked best because they felt that 79 made things a little bit ugly and that 88 worked better. You know, Pepe goes all the way up to 99. So you could, if you really want to follow Pepe, you could do this. And it's now with it, well, actually nothing's changed. Let's do it at 72 so we can see a change. There we go. So now it's formatted to 72 characters. This has been moved down. Uh, we can also move it to 99. I think pretty much everything will move back up. I don't know. Because, yeah, this is another thing. So if, you, if you're going to do that, you need to remove these trailing commas. Because if there's a trailing comma there, Black goes, oh, you want this like this. I'm not going to change it. So if we remove that, save it, and then do it, it'll, it'll put everything back. Um, so it's you do have some control over it. Another way that you have control over it is by using comments. So if, if we say, for example, had a comment format off and then you would do format on when you wanted it to come back on. And then we had a line length at say 72. Uh, we can see that this is formatted to be the same. However, this is left alone. And this is useful in some cases because I ran into the, an issue where black was adamant of a particular style of formatting and it was very ugly and it didn't even conform within the line limits. My solution did, but black's didn't. So it's not absolutely perfect. So what you can do in situations like that is you can actually deactivate the formatting on certain bits of code. So if you wanted this line to be this long, then you can just specify to black, hey, turn the formatting off here and then turn it back on here. Um, so if I, if I move that, maybe it will give a better indication of what this is doing. Uh, so if I do that and that, also there's one actually, there's one thing I forgot to talk about. Um, so yeah, it hasn't changed these quotes here. You would have seen this move down a line and there was actually one problem I forgot to mention is that these were one line apart. Uh, so methods are fine being one line apart. Classes and functions, essentially anything on the top level should be two lines apart according to PEP8. So if you run it again, you can see uh, that, oh, because I didn't save it. There you go. So we can see that it's actually provided our two line space where it needs it. That's um, another thing that it does. I did forget to mention that initially, but you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, there are a lot more things that Black does. I didn't want to do a, you know, a completely comprehensive thing because there's not much point in knowing everything that it does. This is probably the most common things that you'll find. Um, black formats, you know, as best it can, your code to be PEP8 conformant. And it works on old code bases as well. If you have an old code base, you can run this and it will probably do a lot of the work for you. And then, uh, you know, maybe you just got to go through and, uh, and patch some stuff up where need be. But if you're looking to easily format your code well to PEP8, at least a, res at least a respectable amount, but you don't really want to learn PEP8 or you don't want to, uh, want to bother actually following the rules while you're coding, then you can use black and it will do it all for you, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, that was it for this video. If you liked it, hit that like button to let me know because it helps me out. And if you want to see more content like this, then consider subscribing uh, because I'll be doing a lot more 
of uh, of this series. I'm actually going to do another two videos today, right now, um, which will go up in the coming weeks. So that should be cool. I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I'll see you next time where we talk about sorting imports in alphabetical order using a tool called iSort. So we'll see you for that.